What's up everyone? So today we're gonna to talk about all the most important things with creatine supplementation, including what kind to take, what to avoid, how to take it, and along the way we'll even dispel some common myths. I'm James Grage, your Supplement Industry Insider. Now, unfortunately, with social media, there continues to be a lot of bad information out there coming from people who should know better. So today, we're not just going to lean on my 25-year career in sports supplements. We're going to go right to the ultimate source of information, which is the ISSN, or the International Society of Sports Nutrition's official position stand on creatine. All right, so let's first talk about what type of creatine to use. So we're going to drag in the whiteboard. So for those of you that hate the whiteboard, tough shit. So in the early 90s, 1993 to be exact, creatine monohydrate hit the market. Now this is your tried and true version of creatine with probably a thousand plus published papers on its safety and efficacy. With that being said, supplement marketers are always trying to sell the next latest, greatest thing. So in my career, I think I've seen probably close to 20 different forms of creatine, including creatine ethyl ester, creatine hydrochloride, et cetera. I'll list all of those down in the description. Now, each of them either promise better absorption, better solubility, enhanced performance, but at the end of the day, none of them have been proven more effective than good old fashioned creatine monohydrate. And as a matter of fact, some of them have proven to be inferior. Now, as far as what form of creatine to use, whether powder or liquid, I recommend staying away from the liquids because creatine in a solution, a liquid, can convert to creatinine, which is a waste product found in our blood that our kidneys end up filtering out. So there are other forms of creatine that have been developed, that have been shown to be more stable in a solution, but that doesn't mean that they're effective. So it's better to stick to a powder form of creatine. Now, most creatines these days are what's called micronized, but not all of them. So look for one that's micronized, which simply means that it's broken down into smaller particles, so it's finer, goes into a solution better, and eliminates a lot of that grittiness. Now, personally, I stick to brands that use the German form of creatine, which goes by the brand name Crea Pure. This is the most common one. And the same company also makes another version called Crea Vitalis. They're the exact same product. They're just going after your sports performance crowd with Crea Pure. And this one, they're going after more of the health and wellness crowd with some of the cognitive benefits of creatine. Now, if your favorite sports supplement brand is using one of these, you will see it on the bottle. You will actually see the Crea Pure logo or the Crea Vitalis logo. So look for that. Any brand that just says German made creatine, I'd be a little skeptical of. Now outside of the German made creatine, the rest of them are coming from overseas and they use a different manufacturing process that can result in more contaminants than the German made creatine. So heavy metals being some of them, also a chemical called dehydrotriazine, which when found in significant amounts can pose a health risk. So personally, I prefer the German made creatine. So look for the Crea Pure and Crea Vitalis logos. All right, now let's shift gears and talk about how to take creatine. The first thing is creatine loading. Do you need to load creatine? The answer is no, you don't. But the traditional approach to creatine loading to maximize creatine stores, so the fastest way to do it, is by taking 20 to 25 grams of creatine a day. Now, typically, this is split up into multiple doses, five gram doses, so either four times a day or five times a day over the course of five to seven days. And that is your fastest way to maximize creatine stores. What's the downside with this? Well, because creatine is what's called an osmotically active substance, it pulls water in, it can pull a lot of water into your gut, causing gastrointestinal distress. So a lot of people say it upsets their stomach and it can also result in some temporary water weight just for the first couple of days. So although this is the fastest way to load creatine, it's not the only way. 
The alternate method is simply taking three to five grams a day, just once a day, over the period of 28 days. So this can help alleviate some of those symptoms. It's just as effective. This one's just faster. Now for the precise minded individual, there is a way to calculate this based on body weight. So the calculation is 0.3 grams of creatine per kilogram of body weight per day. So someone like myself, I would have to calculate pounds. So 180 pounds divided that by 2.2 to convert that to kilograms, which would be about 82 kilograms. Then I would multiply that by 0.3 grams per day, which would put me right about 25 grams. So this is more precise, but most people, let's face it, it's a lot easier just to go with a standard protocol. Now I'd say the exception to this would probably be a lighter individual, say a female. If she weighed maybe 115 pounds, by the time you do the conversion, that would probably result in about 15 grams of creatine a day. So that would be your exception. Now with that being said, Creatine isn't just for men, it's not just for bodybuilders, it's also beneficial for women, for teenagers, and even our aging population. Now it's important to remember that creatine isn't some sort of weird foreign chemical. It's a natural nutrient that's found in our body and also in some of the foods we eat like meat and fish. And besides the athletic performance benefits or the muscle building benefits, new research emerges almost every day showing other potential benefits of creatine including brain function, maybe injury prevention, and even enhanced recovery and other health benefits. All right, so to wrap everything up here, creatine is a scientifically supported strategy to enhance performance, enhance muscle building, as well as some other potential health benefits. So time to ditch some of that gym folklore that you've heard and take advantage of some of the benefits of taking a creatine supplement. If you have concerns about some of the other unwanted side effects of creatine that you may have heard about, like balding or acne or kidney damage and some of these common myths, make sure to check out the other videos in this series. We'll go ahead and we'll put a link to that series at the end of this video. Now, if you like this video and you wanna see more like it, please go ahead and give this one a like. I'd appreciate it. Subscribe, turn on notifications. I'm James Grage and I'll see you next video.